Hello, my name is Mitchell Levine. I'm with the Nassau County Emergency Medical Services Academy, and I'm going to be demonstrating Skill Station 4A of the New York State Emergency Medical Technician's Practical Exam. This portion of the exam has three parts. It's the sizing, placement, and removal of an oropharyngeal airway, or OPA, the sizing and placement of a nasal pharyngeal airway, as well as appropriate techniques for suctioning the upper airway. Prior to the insertion of an oral pharyngeal airway, we must first measure between the corner of the mouth and the angle of the jaw, like so. Once it's appropriately measured and sized, you can use a cross finger scissor technique to open up the mouth, holding the OPA 180 degrees in opposite natural anatomical direction, applying it all the way back to the throat, being certain not to push the posterior region of the tongue back, followed by a 180 degree twist. The flange of the OPA should lay outside the mouth at all times. If it becomes necessary to remove an oral pharyngeal airway, do so in the natural anatomical direction, like so. When it's time to suction my patient, I must first assemble the equipment in this case, I have chosen a rigid tip or yank hour catheter with a whistle tip control. The next step is to turn on the unit and verifying that there is suction by reading the gauge. Once your equipment is put together and is tested, it is now time to begin suctioning. With the suction unit on, and prior to actually creating vacuum within the tubing, I'm going to open the airway with a cross finger technique, enter the suction catheter as far back as I can see, begin suctioning by closing down the whistle tip, and vacuuming on the way out in semicircular or circular motion. Prior to inserting the nasal pharyngeal airway, choose an airway that measures the same length as the distance between the patient's tip of the ear and the nostril. Lubricate the NPA with water-soluble gel and insert the NPA with the bevel of the nasal pharyngeal airway facing the patient's nasal septum. Gently insert the nasal pharyngeal airway all the way in until it sits just right. I'm going to be demonstrating New York State Emergency Medical Technician Skill Station 4B, Supplemental Oxygen Administration. First, I'm going to indicate to the evaluator that I'm wearing appropriate body substance isolation. After that, I'm going to inspect the tank for any significant damage. Then I'm going to make sure that it is an oxygen tank by verifying the pin index system of the tank matches up with the pin index system of the oxygen regulator. I'm going to make sure that my oxygen regulator has a washer in place and then gently I'm going to line up the regulator with the tank and secure the two together. Once the two are secured together, I'm going to make sure that there are no leaks apparent by first closing down the flow leader valve and then opening up the tank. I don't hear any leaks, so I'm good to go. I inspect the amount of oxygen in the tank and indicate that this tank has 1,400 pounds per square inch of oxygen. I'm now ready to set up an oxygen delivery system for my patient. In delivering oxygen to the patient with a non-rebreather mask, I must verify the presence of a flapper valve separating the reservoir from the mask itself. If it does not have this flapper valve, it is not a non-rebreather mask. My next step is to attach the oxygen tubing to the oxygen tank. After the tank has been turned on, I'm going to set the flow rate with at least 12 liters per minute of oxygen flowing to the mask. Following that, I'm going to fill up the oxygen reservoir bag and then apply the mask to the patient's face. Over the mouth and nose, putting the strap behind the patient's head, gently pinching the nose area, making sure the mask has a good seal 
and if necessary, snugging up on the oxygen straps. It is important to make sure that the reservoir for this mask stays full upon inspiration of the patient. Being that my patient is having difficulty accepting this mask, I am now going to remove the mask from the patient and switch to a nasal cannula. And now to attach the nasal cannula to the patient. First start by placing the prongs within the nasal nares, wrapping it around each ear, and then securing it in place by snugging up the lasso. The oxygen flow rate from the oxygen tank should be six liters per minute or less. Once the medical staff from the hospital requests that you remove the patient from the oxygen delivery system, do so in the opposite order that you applied it. Firstly, remove the patient's mask or nasal cannula. After removing the oxygen delivery system from the patient, you may now turn off the flow valve on the oxygen tank followed by turning off the oxygen tank itself and then bleeding whatever oxygen may be left. Once the oxygen has bled out from the regulator, it is now safe to remove the regulator from the tank.